Kingdom Hearts is a pretty long running series at this point, spanning a total of 22 years. And recently, I've been thinking a lot about both of these decades. That first decade for Kingdom Hearts from 2002 through to 2012 in my opinion, is the golden decade of the franchise. And I think most of you guys will probably agree with this. Just looking at the sheer amount of releases we got within that first 10 years compared to how Kingdom Hearts has been operating for the most recent decade. Within that very first decade, we got so many Kingdom Hearts releases and fully fledged games at that. In 2002, we got the very first game, 2004 Chain of Memories for GBA, 2005 Kingdom Hearts 2, 2007 Rechain of Memories, a remake of the GBA entry, 2008 was coded, though don't really consider this, it was Japan exclusive for mobile phones, 2009 358 over 2 days, 2010 both Birth by Sleep and Recoded, the remake of Coded. Yeah, it actually released in 2010 in Japan. So Japan got both Birth by Sleep and Recoded in one single year. Two Kingdom Hearts games in one year. That is just unheard of nowadays. And finally, 2012, Dream Drop Distance. The years from 2013 through to 2023, I consider to be basically the remaster years. Most of this decade here was filled with the HD remixes basically Square Enix modernizing the older Kingdom Hearts games and making them more accessible due to the fact that Kingdom Hearts had sort of this problem of spreading its games onto multiple platforms, meaning for anyone that wanted to jump into the series and experience everything, it was incredibly hard to do so, meaning that you needed a total of four different systems in order to see everything. The HD remixes were absolutely necessary, and also too, it's fantastic to be able to play all of those classic Kingdom Hearts titles in HD at higher frame rates. However though, the bulk of the Kingdom Hearts content throughout this decade was simply just remasters of games that we had already received the decade before. The other half of this release cycle within this 10 year span was the introduction to mobile phone game content. Oh god. In 2013, we saw the release of Kingdom Hearts Key, a Japanese exclusive browser based game. Then in 2015, we saw the release of Kingdom Hearts Unchained Key, basically what is a reconcepted version of Key, though it is a continuation from Key's story, but now it's on mobile phones and accessible worldwide. A lot of the Kingdom Hearts focus throughout this decade though was on Kingdom Hearts Unchained Key or what would later become Kingdom Hearts Union Cross with a significant story update. The game would span a total of six years, with it finally wrapping up its story updates in 2021. And while I absolutely have to admit that the story that's presented in Unchained's Key Union Cross is actually one of the best in the entirety of the Kingdom Hearts series, yeah, I would much rather a proper console-based, fully-fledged Kingdom Hearts title than, uh, than this. I, I, I just, I couldn't get down on the gameplay of this, man. I did not like it at all. I tapped out of Union Cross pretty fairly quickly. Three years, I think, I lasted so half the time span of this game. It was just wasting too much of my money. And I think, overall, the actual gameplay of this game was as mobile phone game as it possibly gets. Got to a point where it just wasn't fun to play. In 2020, we would yet again see another Kingdom Hearts mobile phone game release, attached to the same app as Union Cross, known as Kingdom Hearts Dark Road. This was an origin story for Xehanort, and yeah, the narrative point of this game was fantastic. But again, it's a mobile phone game, and is as mobile phone gamey as it possibly gets. It is not fun. If we look at it, from 2013 through to 2023, we only got three proper Kingdom Hearts games, and only literally one of those out of the three is a fully fledged title. Within Kingdom Hearts 2.8, we got 0.2 Birth by Sleep, which was a brand new Kingdom Hearts title and was our first taste test towards what a modern Kingdom Hearts game would feel like. This was a great time. It's a fantastic game, though it is basically a tech demo. It does contain new story, but the runtime of this is only about an hour or two. We also got Kingdom Hearts Melody of Memory in 2020, which kind of took us by surprise. We weren't expecting a new Kingdom Hearts game to follow up so soon after the release of Kingdom Hearts 3. However, this wasn't a normal Kingdom Hearts game. It is a rhythm game. Don't get me wrong though, I loved Melody of Memory for one serving as a kind of recap 
upon all of the events that transpired in that first saga of Kingdom Hearts across many different years, being a final foothold into the series before the series moves into its next phase. And as a rhythm game, I think it's fantastic. Kingdom Hearts was in a position where it always deserved a rhythm game entry, considering the music of this franchise is some of the best in gaming as a whole. But really, the only fully fledged new Kingdom Hearts game that we actually got in this decade was Kingdom Hearts 3. And that's a little crazy to think about when you compare that previous first 10 years of the franchise. Honestly, man, I really, really miss those days of pretty much receiving a subtitled Kingdom Hearts entry every year or two. Now, of course, in this day and age, we're in a much different position when comparing game development from the early 2000s to now. Obviously, games take a lot longer to develop as quality only continues to increase as well as expectations. It's kind of insane to think back to the PlayStation 2 days where you would have big name developers like Naughty Dog with Jack and Daxter, Insomniac with Ratchet and Clank, or Sucker Punch with Sly, only taking about a year or two to develop each of the installments for these franchises, and for the games to release to a pretty decent quality. However, gone are those days where games follow up with the sequel so quickly. This is pretty much an extinct practice within the gaming industry. Budgets are so much higher, like the amount of money that now gets funneled into video game development is ridiculous, sometimes in some cases more so than full-blown Hollywood films. The practice of releasing games so quickly is extinct, and it's barely seen anymore nowadays. Unless, of course, you're looking at maybe the Yakuza franchise, which I have no idea what kind of drugs the Sega team over at the Ryuga Gotoku studio are taking in order to develop these games so quickly and at a consistent pace, but from 2014 through to 2024, there is like 12 different Yakuza games that have released. This is insanity. Yakuza fans are eating well, relish in this man, because again, this is an extinct practice that almost no well-known developers involve themselves in nowadays. It's sort of crazy because as of right now, over the past few years, from 2021 through to where we are now in 2024, this is the longest amount of time that the Kingdom Hearts series has remained dormant without a brand new entry. Of course, we know that we've got Kingdom Hearts Missing Link that is currently in development slated to be the next Kingdom Hearts game, though this has faced many, many delays, and again, is also a mobile phone game, though this one is definitely closer to being a traditional Kingdom Hearts title to some degree compared to what we got with Union Cross. But honestly, I think the reason why people were so impatient with the Kingdom Hearts 3 development cycle, aside from just it taking so long to get that third numbered entry title, is because we were so used to receiving Kingdom Hearts games pretty damn consistently within the first 10 years of the series. Whereas the next 10 years was basically just filled with mobile phone game content and remasters. It started to get me thinking about how Final Fantasy approaches its releases, where every few years we'll get a big heavy hitter AAA quality Final Fantasy entry, but in those years between, Square Enix will release a AA Final Fantasy game. Personally, I think that Square Enix should definitely take the same approach with Kingdom Hearts. Again, they used to do this within the first 10 years, but quickly dropped off during the mobile phone game and remaster era. Going back to this would allow more consistent Kingdom Hearts content to funnel through, with having the mainline games remain AAA developed on Unreal. And for the smaller Kingdom Hearts titles to, I don't know, perhaps maybe be developed on that old Kingdom Hearts engine. An engine that I think, looking at the visuals from the HD remixes, is kind of timeless. I'm an absolute sucker for the old visual style of Kingdom Hearts. I definitely like the modern style now with Unreal Engine, but there is definitely something very unique and quite charming about the old graphics. I think the idea of having these AA quality Kingdom Hearts titles being developed on that old engine, taking significantly less development time than that of the mainline games being developed on the Unreal Engine is actually a fantastic idea. One thing though that definitely does have me worried with the current release state of Kingdom Hearts is that the subtitled games are slowly dissolving into mobile only installments and for any other content to basically just be the mainline games on consoles. Now we don't know if this is actually the case but I mean if we do look at the subtitled Kingdom Hearts games that have released over the past 10 years, they are basically all mobile phone games 
aside from Melody of Memory, and 0.2, which is, again, basically a tech demo. That's just some food for thought. I definitely think that the current state that the Kingdom Hearts release cycle is in is very reflective of just the gaming industry as a whole. This isn't just a thing going on with Kingdom Hearts with slow releases, but it it's kind of relative to a lot of different gaming franchises nowadays. I think, honestly speaking, Games just take way too long to develop, with just absolutely ridiculous budgets backed behind them. It is quite literally getting to a point now where both developers and publishers are starting to rethink their approach to game development to ensure that the money that they are putting into a project is eventually returned to them plus more. That's the whole idea, right? Is to make profit. While I definitely think that Kingdom Hearts is basically on the brink of a big comeback, we should start to see a lot of Kingdom Hearts content Content pop up soon because as I was saying the past few years have been incredibly quiet the most quiet the franchise has ever seen I do hope for this next upcoming saga of the franchise that Square Enix have a consistent approach however guys that is all for today be sure to leave your thoughts and opinions down in the comment section below I'm sure you dudes all have some pretty strong opinions about this I think at this point we're all starved and we basically just want something so I'd love to know what you guys think however dudes be sure to follow me on my other social media platforms and subscribe to the channel to keep up with everything that's going on here thank you so much to my turkey tastic patrons you guys are awesome i'm cynical hopefully on a fantastic day and we'll talk real soon